<clears throat> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. <clears throat> Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <clears throat> I'm ever amazed at the Hare Krishna movement. Ever amazed. Here in the Gainesville area, it's, it's, it's starting to feel like Navadweep at the time of Lord Chaitanya's preaching when he was there. As a student and as a teacher, Navadweep was the hub of all the uh, intellectual, uh, everyone was there with their uh, schools of thought on the Vedas and on the goal of life and what was the nature of the absolute, what was the highest truth. They were all there with their different schools of, with their different approaches In Navadweep, it was a hotbed of that kind of activity, intellectual, educational, research. And they were coming from all over India to go to Navadweep, the Brahmins and the teachers, because of the atmosphere. Uh, Gainesville is, is, is <laughs> they used to open this Bhakti Vedanta Institute. aimed at this exact uh, activity. It, Prabhupada, he was visiting, I, I think it was MIT, very early on, like 67 or something like that. He was visiting big, in, big educational institute, and there were a lot of Indian students, and they were studying engineering and you know, things like that, and uh, architecture. And Prabhupada asked the question, he said, so where is the Department of Study for the difference between spirit and matter? Where is that department for studying that? It's actually the most important thing. All these other pursuits, they, they're just like, part of the temporary uh, material situation, provide material comforts, try to make this temporary life a little more comfortable. So he asked, where is that department of study for the difference between spirit and matter? Where is it? Of course, there wasn't any <clears throat> until now. Because that's what the Vaishnavas bring. That's what Prabhupada envisioned. That there would be something like, there should be many of them, Institute, Bhaktivedanta Institute. And to, in an educated, in, in intellectual way, take on all these Western philosophers. Like in Navadweep, um, Lord Chaitanya took on all these Mayavadis and with their different philosophies and understandings about the goal of life, and he took them all on. And he defeated everyone. <laughs> it said he was so expert in this debate and intellectual discussion that they, they would, he and his students would be doing this. They would present a philosophy that was current at the time, and he would defeat it. And then he would defeat his own philosophy that he just defeated theirs with. And he was, he was so brilliant that uh, 
Hare Krishna, nothing could top his ability to discuss philosophically and intellectually in, in devotional ecstasy these other philosophies. So Prabhupada briefly went into the Western philosophers um, There's one small book, Dialectical Spiritualism or something, where Prabhupada was trying to engage some of his, it was pretty early on, some of his disciples in presenting to him these Western philosophies. And uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Ra. But it was clear indication from Prabhupada that he wanted this. He wanted the, his disciples to be able to make a significant impact on the Western philosophical scene, the Western scientific scene. He wanted that impact there. And Ridayananda, he's preaching and explaining, he, he understands a lot about the Western scene of uh, philosophical thought and the history of how things have evolved in Western society, Western culture. It was very interesting. I've heard him speak about this before. He spoke about it again uh, yesterday, how the history of religion, religion became very dogmatic. You're talking about in the West. Very dogmatic and was controlling everything. The religious leaders were controlling everything. And the actual message, spiritual message, had become corrupted. And it was a very strong uh, controlling, you know, like they were burning people at the stake, you know, because he made a joke, he says, because they didn't go to church on Sunday, they'd burn them at the stake. So there was ah, dialectic spiritualism, Murari Mohan says. Yes, yes. So then these different uh, philosophers were coming as a reaction to this overbearing, stifling um, environment, and then there was a science and rational thought and reasoning. I'm not studied in this. I'm trying to remember how I heard him take us through this history. And then that became strong. And that's what we have now, more or less, is the triumph of reason, science, and rationality over this uh, religious, domineering, stifling atmosphere. But it goes from too far to the religious part, choking everybody and missing the point, to too far to the scientific, rational thing, which ends up choking and stifling everyone. So what he's seeing is the pendulum, it went from here, too far into religious dogmatism, fanaticism, and along with that corruption of power and... Um, problems with lust and greed, it all starts to come into it, into the controlling structure of the, these uh, religious mammoths. And then now it's gone into the, the pendulum swung the other way, and it's the same problem, it's just the other side of the coin. It's becoming dogmatic, oppressive, contaminated in, in, um, by these lust and greed and power, but it's just on this other side now. So what he's seeing is this is another turning point, a big wave. He compared it to when he was growing up in California. They used to go surfing as a, as a kid. 
and they would wait for the big wave so they could ride it in. He says, this is the big wave. We're at a turning point. And this is where Krishna consciousness and the Bhaktivedanta Institute comes in. And this kind of preaching in the West, especially, to turn it away from this obsession with science and polluting the atmosphere with all the crap they're inventing. <laughs> <laughs> ruining the food, they're, they're ruining everything with all their science, you know, it's like, because it's too much, it's excess, excessive, anything excessive, excessive religious zeal is fanaticism, and excessive, it's just, it's too much, ex it's excessives, <laughs> like Krishna says, just, you know, happiness, stress, loss of gain, victory, or defeat, you know, don't get into the excesses, you know, it's just, you know, stay focused, and you'll get there. <clears throat> so he sees this is perfect timing for something like the Bhaktivedanta Institute to make a significant breakthrough into the intellectual community who many are ready to hear something more spiritual. So it's pretty exciting the vision that the devotees who are dedicating their resources, their time, their efforts, everything to serving Prabhupada by providing the Department of Education that studies the difference between spirit and matter. And that's what this Bhaktivedanta Institute is. It's pretty exciting. So I was there for the grand opening and uh, it's a beautiful building. It used to be the residence of the president of the university there, past president of the university. So it's a very nice building. And um, somehow the devotees have that building now. It's a, it's a lovely building. It's, it's really very nice. And uh, the, the present president of the University of Florida, Gainesville, uh, attended some programs yesterday and glorified uh, Krishna Consciousness Movement and the work that the devotees have been doing there for years and years and years, like 50 years. They've been on campus distributing healthy food to the students every day. And also there's a preaching center there for the students to come and get trained up to become bhaktas and bhaktins, called Krishna House. And the uh, pres president of the university uh, was extolling these activities and appreciating very much. Uh, he was very happy about the presence of Krishna consciousness on his campus. And then the mayor came, the mayor of Gainesville, and he had wonderful things to say and was very supportive of the new facility that just opened up this institute right there at the right near the campus and he also was saying Gainesville just wouldn't be the same without Hare Krishna <laughs> so it's pretty exciting yeah and uh They'll be writing books, they'll be having seminars, they'll be having retreats, they'll have guest speakers, and they'll be attracting quite a bit of attention to dealing with these different Western philosophies and sciences, cosmology, uh, philosophy, uh, there's a whole list. I was looking at what the, the list that they have so far of uh, topics of discussion and research that they'll be, uh, this is very attractive for, you know, intelligent people. And uh, let me see if I can find the list. Hare Krishna. Uh, 
Hare Krishna. Oh, man. Where is that list? Oh, it's in the other computer. Uh, I can find it on here. Hare Krishna. Let's look up. Bhakti Vedanta Institute. I spelled it wrong. Will Google know what I'm looking for? Yes, Google knows. <laughs> All right. Hare Krishna. Okay. And here's their field of research. Okay. Cosmology and cosmography. Quantum physics. Microbiology and genetics. Evolutionary theory. Natural history. Artificial intelligence. History and philosophy of science. So they're just opening up and this is part of their list um, to kind of get them going. And then in terms of metaphysics, consciousness studies, Sankhya philosophy, epistemology and hermeneutics, and life comes from life. And then they'll also be dealing with um, ecological issues such as cow protection, sustainable agriculture, off-grid communities, energy auditing, and inventory environmental studies. So that's just sort of as they launch this uh, Hare Krishna. And there are already quite a bit of research papers that have been um, published. So that's how they're starting out. Pretty exciting. Hare Krishna. So, Prabhupada wants this very much. To study the difference between spirit and matter. And to attract the Western people. Especially the intelligent class. Very encouraging. So, they're not dressing so much in traditional Indian clothing. Um, I think I was the only one there with tilak on. But I just wear tilak wherever I go. I just wear, it doesn't matter where I go, I wear tilak. But uh, that's not their mood to present uh, like the, the culture, Indian culture. That's not their mood. Their mood is to approach these different philosophies and these different teachings. Um, especially to pull out what is the difference between spirit and matter. And in that way, introduce the personality of Godhead, Krishna, to people who, in general, may be like total atheists, totally unappreciative of any kind of religious practice because of their strong attachment to reasoning and scientific experiment and so once again Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes up with the ways and means to engage everyone <laughs> it's said that the student community is the most difficult to engage because they're very cerebral and they try to understand everything in terms of logic and reason and experiment and Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So quite a nice undertaking. So because they're not dressed up, someone has commented here on the video. It's taken a swing at one of the teachers there and is complaining because they're not dressed like you would expect an Indian 
guru to dress. But there are different preaching fields, and this is a very specific service. And at least I can understand, you know. Like when I would go out distributing books, um, that, that was a sacrifice like many in my generation made uh, to get things going. We were the first ones when Prabhupada came over and there was nothing. And he was just translating the books and as soon as one was published, we'd grab a case or two of them and run out the door with them. Because that was what it was. That was like the primary sacrifice at the time to try to establish Krishna consciousness. And then when he left, uh, it changed. The Indians stepped in because we weren't very good managers. Um, and also there were some problems uh, came up in people's personal lives and it was there were lawsuits, there was all kinds of things that happened when Prabhupada left. The Indians stuck in. And they made their sacrifice. They gave their money, their time, uh, everything to uh, maintain and to expand to one degree or another the Hare Krishna movement. But they're coming from another culture and in the West uh, it didn't mesh very well. They were still kind of like, looked like uh, a foreign thing to people in the, in the West. So, but now that is changing and everything is under the direction of Krishna. So this step in the direction of this kind of preaching where devotees aren't like all dressed up, uh, you know, in traditional Indian clothing, uh, is actually helpful to approach people without them having to immediately put up some kind of, oh, these people are different, it's too different for me, I don't, it's another culture, it's, it's, it looks foreign to me. So not to let that get in the way, the dress and the clothing. And to get to the essence of it, hearing about Krishna, remembering Krishna, becoming conscious of God and everything will Krishna is in control so when I would go out distributing books I just dressed like normal people in the street I didn't have like tea lock and a sari and you know I didn't do that um, some devotees did and it worked for them, but most of us it didn't work very well because we looked too different. So we just go out and regular, you know, nicely, uh, chaste looking, long skirts, you know, or I, can, I think maybe at one point pants also. In the West, women wear pants, and and it was easier to approach people and let them get a book and give a donation for helping people understand a little more about their relationship with God. <laughs> it just made it so much easier. You didn't get to have the shock effect, you know. Of, but there's a, there's, there's a time and a place for everything. There's a time and a place for a shock effect. That's not... There's a time and a place for the cultural display. There's, there's that also. But in, in, from what I understand, in India, things are really taking off because... That is their culture. Saris and bangles and kirtas and dhotis and sannyasis with sticks. They, that is their culture. So it's not foreign to them. But that's not the culture here. Culture here is a little different. And evidently, Prabhupada, he had some ideas about preaching here um, to not have... Uh, the deities right there in the main preaching hall. The, to leave, like if some churches were acquired, like I believe this was Los Angeles, 
they acquired a church. And Prabhupada said, leave the pews in there. Don't take the pews out. Leave the pews in. And the temple room would be separate in the back. The deity would be separate in the back. And have the Western people come in like they're accustomed to do. Sit in the pews and hear about Krishna. At one point, that was a tactic that Prabhupada wanted to take. Uh, it didn't go that way. Um, young people at the time were looking for another culture. They were looking for something else. And so it did appeal to them. Here was something different. Uh, and so it worked at that time. So whatever works, you know, Prabhupada tried many things. But he left that open, that that is a way to preach, a way to get the message to people and engage them in Krishna consciousness, engage them in reading books about Krishna, associating with the devotees, hearing and chanting, taking food offered to Krishna. And the it's interesting because the, the, tel, the uh, president of the campus, of the college in Gainesville, one other thing he mentioned was when he came to congratulate everyone on the new institute there, he said that 50 years ago when he was a student at the university, he used to go to the Krishna lunch and he didn't have much money, he was just a student and he would the food was very wholesome, was delicious, and he would eat prasadam. He would go very often and take prasadam at the... Now he's the president of the community, of, of the college. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Yeah. Pretty wonderful stuff. <laughs> Krishna. Um, I want to read a little bit from Bhagavad Gita. I use the old ones, um, not because I'm fanatical, but just I'm used to the wording. It's what I grew up with. Um, I just I use the old ones, but you know, I, you know, it's not a political statement. It's just I like them. <laughs> Krishna. It has a familiar sound. Hare Krishna. So I was looking at chapter 8 and chapter 9, and Krishna is really on a roll. In this particular scripture, Bhagavad Gita, God himself is speaking directly to his devotee and teaching him the science of devotional service. Other scriptures are about God and different devotees and different great saints and sages, they share their knowledge and their realization about God and their encounters with him. And there may be some exchange between God and the sage or the saint or the devotee. And they share that. But in Bhagavad Gita, I'm looking at this chapter 8, chapter 9, Krishna's on a roll. He's on a roll. Arjuna asks one question, chapter 8, text 1, and then Krishna's, oh, he asks two questions, and then Krishna's off and running. And he doesn't stop to catch his breath, he keeps going. At least for two chapters here. Uh, what happens? He keeps going. Yeah, he keeps, he keeps going. Chapter 10, he's on a roll. He's talking about himself. And he's into it. I'm this, I'm that. I'm, I'm great, Arjuna. You should know. I'm, I'm the Lord of Lords, refuge of the world. He just keeps going. So, 
I was going to read chapter 8. Ah, oh, Krishna. So, here's Arjuna. Arjuna, Vacha, Kim Tad Brahma. This is a translated in commentary. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And it's especially meant for the leaders of society. It's especially meant for the ruling class. It was spoken to the ruling class. Originally, it was spoken to Vivaswan originally. And the demigod of the sun, who was Kshatriya. And then he spoke it to Manu, one of the administrators of all of mankind. <clears throat> this is on the universal plane. And then Manu spoke it to his son, Ichvaku, who was a king on this planet, a very great king. And then it's re-spoken to Arjuna just before the battle took place. So it's meant for especially the administrators. You can see the different preaching fields, you know, the scriptures. Krishna, Shri Asadev's expert. Hare Krishna, literary incarnation of Krishna. <clears throat> Arjuna Vacha Kim Tad Brahma Kim Adyatmam Kim Karma Purushottama Adi Bhutam Cha Kim Proktam Adi Daivam Kim Uchite. Arjuna inquired, O Lord, O Supreme Person, what is Brahman? What is the self? What are fruit of activities? What is this material manifestation? What are the demigods? Please, explain this to me. Two. Adi yagna katam kotra dehe smin madhisudana Prayana kale cha katam yeno si niyatat mabi. How does this Lord of Sacrifice live in the body? And which part does he live, O Madhusudana? And how can those engaged in devotional service know you at the time of death? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Prabhupada's purport briefly here, part of it. The word prayana kale in this verse is very significant because whatever we do in life will be tested at death. Arjuna fears that at the time of death, those who are in Krishna consciousness will forget the Supreme Lord because at such a time bodily functions are disrupted and the mind may be in a panic-stricken state. Arjuna's question, how one's mind can remain fixed on Krishna's lotus feet at such times. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha Aksharam Brahma Paramam Swabhavo Jatma Mukchate Uta bhavo bhavo karo visharga karma samnita. Supreme Lord said, The indestructible, transcendental living entity is called Brahman, and his eternal nature is called the Self. Action pertaining to the development of these material bodies is called karma or fruitive activity. Adi bhutam charo bhava purushas chadi daivatam Adi yagnoham evatra dehe deha bhutam para Physical nature is known to be endless and mutable. The universe is the cosmic form of the Supreme Lord. And I am that Lord, represented as the super soul, dwelling in the heart of every embodied being. Antakale chamameva smaram mukva kalevaram 
ya prayati samadbhavam, yatinas jatra samsaya. And whoever at the time of death quits his body, remembering me alone, at once attains my nature. Of this there is no doubt. Yam yam vapi smaran bhavam, jante kalevaram, tam tam evaiti kanteya, sadatad bhava bhavita. Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, that state he will attain without fail. Tasmat sarveshu kaleshu, mam anusmarayud yacha. Mayar pita mano budhir, mam e vaisyasya samsaya. Therefore, Arjuna, you should always think of me in the form of Krishna. And at the same time, carry out your prescribed duty of fighting. With your activities dedicated to me, and your mind and intelligence fixed on me, you will attain me without doubt. Adyasya yoga yuktena chetasananya gamina paramam purusham divyam yati parjyanu chintayan. He who meditates on the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his mind constantly engaged in remembering me, and deviated from the path, he, O Partha, is sure to reach me. Kavim Puranam Anusasitaram Anur Anis Yam Sam Anusmaritya Sarvasya Dataram Achincha Rupam Aditya Varnam Tamasa Parastat. One should meditate upon the Supreme Person as the one who knows everything, who is the oldest, who is the controller who is smaller than the smallest, who is the maintainer of everything, who is beyond all material conception, who is inconceivable, who is always a person. He is luminous like the sun, and being transcendental is beyond this material nature. Prayana kale manasa chalena, bhaktya yato yoga balena chaiva, Vor maje pranam avesha samya satam param purusham upaiti divyam. One who at the time of death fixes his life air between the eyebrows and in full devotion <coughs> engages himself in remembering the Supreme Lord will certainly attain to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <coughs> Yadaksharam veda vito vadanti <coughs> vishanti yad yatayo vita raga yad ichanto brahmacharyam charanti tate padam sangrahena pravakshe. Persons learned in the Vedas who utter omkara and who are great sages in the renounced order enter into Brahman. Desiring such perfection, one practices celibacy. I shall now explain to you this process by which one may attain salvation. Sarvadvarani sam ya ya mano ridhi nirud yacha murjanat yatmana pranam astito yoga dharanam. The yogic situation is that of Detachment from all sensual engagements, closing all the doors of the senses, fixing the mind on the heart, and the life air at the top of the head, one establishes himself in yoga. Om Itya Sharam Brahma Vyaharan Mam Anusmaram Yaprayati Chajandehan Sayati Paraman Gatim after being situated in this yogic practice and vibrating the sacred syllable Om, the supreme combination of letters, 
one thinks of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and quits his body, he will certainly reach the spiritual planets. Ananya Cheta Satatam Yomam Smarati Nityasa Tasyaham Sulabhapata Nityaya Tasya Yogina Krishna 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 For one who remembers me without deviation I am easy to obtain, O son of Partha, because of his constant engagement in devotional service. Mam upecha punarjanma dukalayam asashvatam napnuvanti mahatmana samsidhim paramangata. After attaining me, the great souls who are yogis in devotion never return to this temporary world, which is full of miseries, because they have attained the highest perfection. Abrahma bhuvana loka punartino arjuna mamu pecha tukanteya punarjanma navijite From the highest planet, the material world, down to the lowest. All our places of misery wherein repeated birth and death take place. But one who attains to my abode, O son of Kunti, never takes birth again. Sahasra yuga paryantam aharyad brahmano vidhu ratrim yuga sahasrantam teho ratra vidho jana By human calculation, a thousand ages taken together is the duration of Brahma's one day, and such also is the duration of his night. Avyakta vyata sarva pravantyahar agame ratra game praliyante tatraiva yakta samnake. When Brahma's day is manifest, this multitude of living entities comes into being, and at the arrival of Brahma's night, they're all annihilated. Bhuta grama sa ev bayam, bhutva bhutva praliyate, ratra game visa parta, prabhavat yaha agame. Again and again the day comes, and this host of beings is active, and again the night falls, O parta, and they are helplessly dissolved. Paro. Parastasma tu bavonyo, yato viyatat sanatana, yasa sarve shubhuteshu, nasyatsuna vinasyati. Yet there is another nature which is eternal and is transcendental to this manifested and unmanifested matter. It is supreme and is never annihilated. When all in this world is annihilated, that part remains as it is. Avyakta shara ityuktas tam ahu paramam gatim yam prapya nanibartante taddama paramam mama. That supreme abode is called unmanifested and infallible, and it is the supreme destination. When one goes there, he never comes back. That's my supreme abode. Purusha sa para parta vatya labhyas tavanyaya yasyanta stani bhutani yena sarvamidam tatam. The supreme personality of Godhead, who is greater than all, is attainable by unalloyed devotion. Although he is present in his abode, he is all pervading. Everything is situated within him. He's talking about himself. Yatra kale tvanan vritim avritim chaiva yogina prayatayanti tam kalam vyakshami bartar shabha. 
O oh, best of the Bhartas, I shall now explain to you the different times at which, passing away from this world, one does not come back. Agnirya tir aha shukla sanmasa uttarayanam tatra prayata gachanti brahma brahma vidojana. Those who know the Supreme Brahman pass away from the world during the influence of the fiery god in the light at an auspicious moment during the fortnight of the moon and the six months when the sun travels in the north. Tumo ratri stata krishna san masa dakshanayanam tatra chandram masam jyotir yogi praptani bhartate the mystic who passes away from this world during the smoke, the night, the moonless fortnight, or in the six months when the sun passes to the south, or who reaches the moon planet, again comes back. Sukla Krishna Gati Yete Jagata Shaspate Mate Ekaya Yat Yanavitam Anya Yavartate Puna According to the Vedas, there are two ways of passing from this world, one in light and one in darkness. When one passes in light, he does not come back, but when one passes in darkness, he returns. Naite sti parta janan Yogi muyati kaschana, tasmat sarveshu kaleshu, yoga yukto bhavarjuna. The devotees who know these two paths, O Arjuna, are never bewildered. Therefore, be always fixed in devotion. Vedeshu yagneshu tapashu chaiva, daneshu yat punya, palam pradistam. Atyeti tat sarvam idam vidikva yogi param stanam upaiti chayam. A person who accepts the path of devotional service is not bereft of the results derived from studying the Vedas, performing austere sacrifices, giving charity, or pursuing philosophical and fruitive activities. At the end, he reaches the supreme abode. One sentence here from Prabhupada's purport. The beauty of Krishna consciousness is that by one stroke, by engaging in devotional service, one can surpass all rituals of the different orders of life. One should hear the Gita from the devotee because at the beginning of the fourth chapter it stated, that the Gita can only be perfectly understood by devotees. Hearing the Gita from devotees, not from mental speculators, is called faith. Through association of devotees, one is placed in devotional service. And by this service, Krishna's activities, form, pastimes, name, etc., become clear. And all misgivings are dispelled. Then, once doubts are removed, the study of the Gita becomes extremely pleasurable and one develops a taste and feeling for Krishna consciousness. In the advanced stage, one falls completely in love with Krishna and that is the beginning of the highest professional stage of life which prepares the devotee's transfer to Krishna's abode in the spiritual sky. Goloka Vrindavan where the devotee enters into eternal happiness. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports to the 8th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita in the matter of attaining the Supreme. Chapter 9 The Most Confidential Knowledge Krishna's still on a roll here. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha, Idam Tute Guyatamam, Pavaksham Nanusuyave, Gyanam Vigyana, 
Sahitam Yat Yatva Moksha Se Subat. Supreme Lord said, My dear Arjuna, because you are never envious of me, I shall impart to you this most secret wisdom, knowing which you shall be relieved of the miseries of material existence. Raja Vidya Raja Guyam Pavitram Idamutamam Patyaksha Vagamam Dharmyam Shushukram Kartamavyayam This knowledge is the king of education, the most secret of all secrets. It's the purest knowledge. And because it gives direct perception of the self by realization, it is the perfection of religion. It is everlasting and it is joyfully performed. Prabhupada has a lot to say in his purport about this verse. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Ashradadana Purusha Dormasyasya Parantapa Aprapya Mamni Bartante Vichu Samsara Bhatmani. Those who are not faithful on the path of devotional service cannot attain me, O conqueror of the foes, but return to birth and death in this material world. Rapad's purport at least part of it, the faithless cannot accomplish this process of devotional service. That's the purport of this verse. Faith is created by association with devotees. Unfortunate people, even after hearing all the evidence of Vedic literature from great personalities, still have no faith in God. They're hesitant and cannot stay fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Thus, faith is a most important factor for progress in Krishna consciousness. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is said that one should have complete conviction that simply by serving the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna, he can achieve all perfection. That is called real faith. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is stated that by giving water to the root of a tree, its branches, twigs, and leaves become satisfied. And by supplying food to the stomach, all the senses of the body become satisfied. Similarly, by engaging in the transcendental service of the Supreme Lord, all the demigods and all the living entities automatically become satisfied. So service, devotional service to Lord Krishna, the nine main categories that Prahlad Maharaj outlines in the ninth canto, seventh canto of Bhagavatam. Topmost is hearing, that's service. Engaging your ears and hearing about Krishna. Chanting, engaging the tongue and speaking and glorifying Krishna. Remembering Krishna. Uh, praying to Krishna. Worshipping Krishna. Serving the lotus feet of Krishna. Carrying out the orders of Krishna. Making friends with the Lord. And offering everything one has in one's possession to Krishna. So it said that any one of them, or two of them, or all of them, but even just one of those practices of devotional service, a person can attain perfection of love of Godhead just by hearing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare.
maya chatam midam sarvam jigat abhyakta murtina matstani sarva bhutani na chaham teshvabhasnita <coughs> By me in my unmanifested form, this entire universe is pervaded. All beings are in me. But I am not in them. <coughs> That's in his uh, unmanifested, unmanifested form. So you can say, well, I am not in them. What he just said, he was in every living entity in the heart as the super soul. Now he's saying, I am not in them. How, how can we understand that? He's talking about his unmanifested form. That everything and everyone rests in Krishna's, in his unmanifested form, his all-pervading Brahman form. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. The example Prabhupada gives to try and understand how Krishna, everything's resting in Krishna and still he remains aloof. Prabhupada gives the example of a king heads a government which is but the manifestation of the king's energy. The different governmental departments are nothing but the energies of the king and each department is resting on the king's power. But still, one cannot expect the king himself to be present in every department personally. That's a crude example. Hmm. Similarly, all the manifestations that we see and everything that exists both in this material world and in the spiritual world are resting on the energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Creation takes place by the diffusion of his different energies, and as is stated in the Gita, he is everywhere present by his personal representation and the diffusion of his different energies. So that's a way to understand how he's present, but he's also aloof. Na chamat stani bhutani pasyame yogam aishvaram. Bhuta Vrinna Cha Bhuta Sto Mahatma Bhuta Bhavana And yet everything that is created does not rest in me. Behold my mystic opulence. Although I am the maintainer of all living entities and although I am everywhere, still myself is the very source of creation. Prabhupada's purport, the Lord is not directly concerned with the maintenance of this material manifestation. Everything is resting on him, but he's aloof. Although they are situated on my inconceivable energy, still, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, I'm aloof from them. This is the inconceivable opulence of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. He is different from this material manifestation, yet everything is resting on him. Yogam Aishvaram, the mystic power of the Supreme Personality. Godhead. Yata kasha stito nityam vayu sarvatra go mahan tata sarvani bhutani 
Matstani you Padaraya as the mighty wind blowing everywhere always rests in ethereal space, know that in the same manner all beings rest in me. Sarva Bhutani Kauteya Prakritim Yanti Mamikam Kalpa Shaye Punastani Kalpado Vishrajam Yaham O son of Kunti, at the end of the millennium every material manifestation enters into my nature, and at the beginning of another millennium, by my potency, I again create. Prakritim swam avastapya vishamya puna puna bhuta gramam imam kritsnam avasam prakritir vasat. The whole cosmic order is under me. By my will, it is manifested again and again. By my will, it is annihilated at the end. Nachamam tani karmani nibadnan ti tananjaya uda shinavad ashinam ashaktam te shukarmashu. O Dananjaya, all this work cannot bind me. I am ever detached, seated as though neutral. Maya Dyakshena Prakrite Suyate Sa Chiracharam Etuna Nena Kanteya Jigatvipar Vivartate This material nature is working under my direction, O son of Kunti, and it is producing all moving and unmoving beings. By its rule, this manifestation is created and annihilated again and again. Avajananti mam mudha manusim tanamasritam param bhavan ajananto mamabhuta maheshwaram. Fools deride me when I descend in the human form. They do not know my transcendental nature and my supreme dominion over all of thee. Mogasa moga karmano. Moga jnana vichetasa, rakshashim asurim, chaiva prakritim mohinim shita. Those who are bewildered are attracted by demonic, atheistic views. In that deluded condition, their hopes for liberation, their fruit of activities, and their culture of knowledge are all defeated. Mahatmanas tumam parta daivim prakritim ashrita vajantyanya manaso yatva bhutatim avyayam. O son of Prita, those who are not deluded, the great souls, are under the protection of the divine nature. They're fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as the supreme personality of Godhead, original and inexhaustible. Satatam kritayantomam yatantas cha jadhavratas namasyanta cha mambakya nitya yukta upasyate always chanting my glories, endeavoring with great determination, bowing down before me, these great souls perpetually worship me, with devotion. Jnana yagne na chapyanye yajanto mam upasate ekadvena pritakvena bahudha vishvaso mukam. Others who are engaged in cultivation of knowledge worship the Supreme Lord as the one without a second, diverse in many, and in the universal form. Aham kratur aham yakna, shvadhaham aham avshadam, mantraham aham evagyam, aham agnir aham hutam. But it is I who am the ritual, I the sacrifice, the offering to the ancestors, the healing herb, the transcendental chant, 
I am the butter and the fire and the offering. Pitaham asya jagato matak datta pitamaha vejam pavitram omkara riksama yajur evacha. I am the father of this universe, the mother, the support, and the grandsire. I am the object of knowledge, the purifier, and the syllable Om. I am also the Rik, the Sama, and the Yajur Vedas. Gatir Bharta Prabhu Shakshi Nibhasha Sharanam Suri Prabhava Pralaya Stanam Nidhanam Dijam Agnayam. I am the goal the sustainer, the master, the witness, the abode, the refuge. Krishna. <laughs> Krishna Chaitanya, Krishna Chaitanya, Krishna Chaitanya. <laughs> Krishna, Krishna. <laughs> I am the goal, the sustainer, the master, the witness, the abode, the refuge, and the dearmost friend. I'm the creation and the annihilation, the basis of everything, the resting place, and the eternal seed. Hare Krishna. Oh, thank you, Marar Mohan Prabhu. Yeah, Krishna. Krishna. Tapam yaham aham varsham nigranam yutsurijam icha amritam chaiva mitushcha sadashat chaham arjuna. Oh, Arjuna. I control the heat, the rain, and the drought. I am immortality, and I am also death personified. Both being and non-being are in me. Okay, the meter is changed on these verses, and I don't feel confident. Yeah, I'm, the meter is changed, so just the English. Those who study the Vedas and drink the Soma juice, seeking the heavenly planets, worship me indirectly. They take birth on the planet of Indra, where they enjoy godly delights. When they have thus enjoyed heavenly sense pleasure, they return to this mortal planet again. Thus, although the Vedic principles, they achieve only flickering happiness. But those who worship me with devotion, meditating on my transcendental form, to them I carry what they lack and preserve what they have. Okay, the meter's back again. Ananyas chintayan tomam ye yagna payupashate kesham nitya biyuktanam yoga shema mahamyaham. Those who worship me with devotion, meditating on my transcendental form, to them I carry what they lack and preserve what they have. Ye pyanya devata bhakta yajante shradayan vita te pimam eva kanteya yajan vidhi kurumakam. Whatever a man may sacrifice to other gods, O son of Kunti, is really meant for me alone, but it's offered without true understanding. Aham hi sarva yag nanam bhokta cha prabhareva cha natu mam a vijananti tat venatas kivanti te. I am the only enjoyer and the only object of sacrifice. Those who do not recognize my true transcendental nature fall down. Yanti deva vrta devan pitri yanti pitri vrta. 
Bhutani Yanti Bhuteja Yanti Mad Yajino Pimam. Those who worship the demigods will take birth among the demigods. Those who worship ghosts and spirits will take birth among such beings. Those who worship ancestors go to the ancestors, and those who worship me will live with me. Patram pushpam palamtoyam yome bhakta prayachati tadaham bhaktyuparitam asnami prayatatmanaha. If one offers me with love and devotion, a leaf, a flower, fruit, or water, I will accept. Yat karosi yat asnasi yat juhosi dadasi yat yat tapas yasi kanteya tat karushva manarpanam. O son of Kunti, all that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer and give away, as well as all austerities you may perform, should be done as an offering unto me. Prabhupada's purport. Thus it is the duty of everyone to mold his life in such a way that he will not forget Krishna in any circumstance. Everyone has to work for maintenance of his body and soul together, and Krishna recommends here in that one should work for him. Everyone has to eat something to live. He should accept remnants of foodstuff offered to Krishna. Any civilized man has to perform religious ritualistic ceremonies. Do it for me. This is called archana. Everyone has a tendency to give something in charity. Krishna says, give it to me. And this means that all surplus money accumulated should be utilized in furthering the Krishna consciousness movement. Nowadays, people are very much inclined to the meditational practice, which is not practical in this age. But if anyone practices meditating on Krishna 24 hours by chanting Hare Krishna mantra on beads, he is surely the greatest yogi, as substantiated by 6th chapter Bhagavad Gita. Subha subha palayar evam moksha se karma pandana sanya se yoga yutama vimukto mam upaisasi. In this way, you will be freed from all reactions to good and evil deeds. And by this principle of renunciation, you will be liberated and come to me. Samoham sarabhuteshu name dvesho stina priya. I envy no one, nor am I partial to anyone. I'm equal to all. But whoever renders service unto me in devotion is a friend, is in me, and I'm also a friend to him. Apichet sudarat shiro vajate mam ananyabhak Sadur eva samantavya samyak vyavasito he saw. Even if one commits the most abominable actions, if he is engaged in devotional service, he is to be considered saintly because he's properly situated. So that's a little difficult to see how, if you're engaged in devotional service, how are you committing abomin abominable actions in devotional service? How does that if you're engaged in devotional service, you're not committing abominable actions, right? Well, no. <laughs> the Prabhupada in the Purpurat explains how that works. And that is exactly Arjuna's dilemma, is I'm being asked by Krishna to do something abominable. I fight against my relatives and kill them my cousins, my teachers, my superiors. I'm being asked to fight and kill them. That's abominable. But Krishna is asking me to do that. <clears throat> He's asking me to serve him like that. So that's my devotional service. 
So Prabhupada explains a little bit how that works. He says, the word sudaracharo used in this verse is significant. We should understand it properly. So what's the word for word, sudaracharo? Committing the most abominable actions. So we have to understand that properly, abominable actions. When a living entity is conditioned, he has two kinds of activities. One is conditional, and the other is constitutional. As for protecting the body or abiding by the rules of society and state, certainly there are different activities, even for devotees, in connection with conditional life. And such activities are called conditional. Besides these, the living entity who is fully conscious of his spiritual nature and is engaged in Krishna consciousness or the devotional service of the Lord, he has activities which are called transcendental. Such activities are performed in his constitutional position and they're technically called devotional service. In the conditioned state, sometimes devotional service and the conditional service in relation to the body will parallel one another. Hey, whoopee, no problem. But, then again, sometimes these activities become opposed to one another. And that's Arjuna's problem. As far as possible, a devotee is very cautious. So he does not do anything that could disrupt his wholesome condition. He knows that perfection in his activities depends on his progressive realization of Krishna consciousness. Sometimes, however, it may be seen that a person in Krishna consciousness commits some act which may be taken as most abominable socially or politically. So for Arjuna, it's not a fall down. But here Prabhupada now switches and he talks about <clears throat> others. Because Arjuna is a pure devotee. Now he's talking about others. He said he calls this a temporary fall down, and it does not disqualify him. In Srimad Bhagavatam, it's stated that if a person falls down, but is wholeheartedly engaged in transcendental service of the Lord, so that's hard to understand how they can be engaged in the transcendental platform of the service of the Lord and fall down. How, how does that fit? How does that fit? Well, devotional service has nine categories. Hearing, chanting, remembering, worshiping, praying, <clears throat> making friends with, carrying out the orders, offering everything to the Lord, serving the lotus feet. So, sometimes one's conditional situation, they find themselves fallen. Fallen from what? Fallen, when I think of it, I usually think of it as falling away from devotional activities and becoming absorbed in material consciousness, covered over, forgetting about Krishna, and just kind of meandering around on the material sensual plane, dull and covered over to the spiritual atmosphere and Krishna. So what kind of fall down is being discussed here? In Srimad Bhagavad's day, if a person falls down but is wholeheartedly engaged in transcendental service of the Lord, <clears throat> the Lord being situated within his heart beautifies him and excuses him from the abomination. So he's engaged in glorifying Krishna. It's kind of like being a schizophrenic or something. And he's doing something or she's doing something um, Abominable. 
look up that word abominable. Sometimes I think I know what a word means. I'll try to get a little more clarity on this. I kind of fall down. Abominable. Moral revulsion. Okay. Moral revulsion. Okay, so it's connected, like Prabhupada's saying, it goes against societal norms of civilized human life. So it's abominable. It goes moral cruelty, you know, revulsion, unpleasant. What does abominable mean in the Bible? Wicked, vile, disgusting, morally wrong. And here is a reference to the Old Testament of eating pork for the Hebrews was considered abominable because it was unclean, it was moral or vile. All right. What does it mean in the dictionary? Detestable, loathsome, a crime. Okay. Abominable fancies. Hmm. Okay, an example of abominable. Uh, the president described the killings as an abominable crime. Or another example, the weather was abominable, cold with wind and rain. Okay, we got a little better idea of abominable, perform something abominable. It's tasteful. Okay. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. The Lord being situated within his heart, even though he's done something abominable, a crime or some sinful uh, nonsense, um, the Lord beautifies him and excuses him from the abomination. The material contamination is so strong that even a yogi fully engaged in the service of the Lord sometimes becomes ensnared. But Krishna consciousness is so strong that such an occasional fall down is at once rectified. Therefore, the process of devotional service is always a success. No one should deride a devotee for some accidental fall down from the ideal path. For as it is explained in the next verse, such occasional fall downs will be stopped in due course as soon as a devotee is completely situated in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, a person who is situated in Krishna consciousness and is engaged with determination in the process of chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, should be considered to be in the transcendental position, even if by chance or accident he's found to have fallen and done something. Uh uh. <laughs> the words Shatter Eva. He is saintly. I'm very emphatic. They are warning to the non-devotees that because of an accidental fall down, the devotee should not be derided. He should still be considered saintly, even if he has fallen down accidentally. And the word mantavya is still more emphatic. If one does not follow this rule 
and do rise a devotee for his accidental fall down, then he is disobeying the order of the Supreme Lord. The only qualification of a devotee is to be unflinchingly and exclusively engaged in devotional service. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Okay. No one should take advantage of this verse and commit nonsense and think he is still a devotee. If he does not improve in his character by devotional service, then it is to be understood that he is not a high devotee. <laughs> Krishna. Krishna. This is Lord Chaitanya's movement. He's come for the most fallen. Sri Prambhavati Dharmatma. Shashvak Chantim Nigachati. Kamteya Pratijani Hi. Nami Bhakta Pranashati. He quickly becomes righteous and attains lasting peace, O son of Kunti. Declare it boldly. My devotee never perishes. Mami Parta Vyapasricha. Ye Pishu Papayonaya. Striyo Vaisha Statasudras. Tepianti Parangatim. O son of Prita, those who take shelter in me, though they be of lower birth, women, Vaishas, merchants, as well as sudras, workers, can approach the supreme destination. Kim Puna Brahma Na Punya Bhakta Rajashaya Tata Anityam Ashaktam Lokam Imam Prapya Vajasvama. How much greater then are the Brahmins, the righteous, the devotees and saintly kings who in this temporary, miserable world engage in loving service unto me. Manmana bhava mad bhakto mad yajimam namaskaru mame vaisyaisi yukvairam atmanam mad parayana Engage your mind always in thinking of me. Offer obeisances, worship me, being completely absorbed in me, surely you will come to me. Thus in Bhaktivinoda Purport, ninth chapter, the most confidential knowledge. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna. So that's a setup for the rest of the day. Having read those two chapters and heard from Krishna, that will be staying during the day. It's, it's like um, if you eat something, you get the nourishment, and then over a period of time, you're digesting it, and it's giving you fuel. So the same by hearing from Krishna, about Krishna, <laughs> or from devotees of Krishna, about Krishna, that's fuel. It's, it's nourishment so that during the rest of the day, until you get to feast again, um, the, it's staying in your mind, in, in your consciousness. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Lama Lama Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Lama Lama Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Lama Lama Hari Hari Krishna